Well, we got an interesting night tonight. It's Thursday night. I don't know if I'm going to watch this game tonight, but we're an hour away from the Steelers and the Browns kicking off. Of course, both sides on defense have a lot of injuries, so you know it's going to have to be between Mitchell Trubisky and Jacoby Brissett. And that just sounds like a mid-off to me, in all honesty. You got the Saints and the Panthers to kick off the Sunday slate. And you kind of wonder what Baker Mayfield can do against this tough seat defense. We'll see what he can because I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see the Panthers really doing anything. You know, I think this team might be 0-3 by the end of this weekend. Like, they got to they gotta get something going. You know, offense ain't working. The defense ain't working together. So something's got to give here. You know, the Saints, you know, despite the fact that they played the Bucks last week pretty tough. They're going to want they're gonna wanna keep going with that. They're going to want to keep going with that toughness. They, they, got, they got some guys on defense like Pete Werner and Demario Davis, you know, that can pick up the slack on defense. You wonder how the Bears are going to do after they got beat up pretty bad by the Packers on Sunday night and they're taking on the Texans. I, I feel like that, 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 should be, that should be interesting, you know. It gets Justin Fields, you know, a little bit more level because we all know the Bears, they probably shouldn't have beat the 49ers week one, but the 49ers shot themselves in the foot. Uh, we, we, we're going we're gonna to have to see what this Bears team can do uh, against the Texans. I'm not going to be watching this. I'm not going to be watching Kansas City, Indianapolis either. We all know Indianapolis is just not... They're just, they're just not that good, man. Like, this... Like, the entire AFC South looks like it's going to have one of those types of years. Like, it's gonna, it's definitely going to be a bad division this year. Hey, the, the sad thing is, is they're going up against Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, who have just been on fire. You know, literally not even... They're, they're not even breaking a sweat out here. They're, they're playing that damn good out here. So we'll see what in the world happens. Because uh, this this Chiefs offense, we know they can move. And then you got the Bills and the Dolphins. This should be the most interesting game of the day. You know, uh, the Bills do have a lot of injuries into their secondary. You know, but can but a lot of people are probably gonna still be asking, get to a throw it deep. You know, can to a get to a throw it deep. Uh, but we'll find out. We'll find out. I think I think this might be a a damn good game. Like definitely. <laughs> I didn't expect to be, um, you know, probably one of the best games in the early window, but it is. Both these teams are undefeated. We'll see who stays undefeated. Somebody's going to have to lose this game unless it goes to overtime somehow and we get a tie. That would be pretty disappointing, but uh, I, th I, think we got a, I think we got a good one. And then you got the Lions, a resurgent Lions against the Vikings who... Did look too good on Monday night, you know. I mean, it. I mean, this Lions offense with the Mon, Amon Ross St. Brown, DeAndre Swift out there. I mean, the Lions. They're actually. Uh, they're not favored to win this game, but, you know, it's it's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. Like I think the Vikings. You know. I'm not sure how to feel about them right now because they got pretty much boat raced, bullied, you know, on all accounts by the Eagles on both sides of the football. I think they caught the Packers off guard a little bit, maybe, but we'll see how this goes. I mean, this is an any given Sunday type situation. That's just how it is in the NFL. Like, the Lions may have some culture under Dan Campbell, they may have some culture. Ravens got to be feeling themselves after last week. I mean, you know, I, 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 they should not have blown this game last week. And the Patriots just have looked anemic on offense. They they were able to pull out a victory last week against Pittsburgh, but they just look anemic. You know, I think Lamar Jackson might have something to say to this New England defense. I think he might have something good to say to him, And that's, hey, I'm going to throw it all over I'll throw it all over y'all. Or maybe that's good for Lamar and bad for the Patriots defense. We'll, we'll see how this one goes. It, it should it should be it should be a good one. It should be an interesting one here. 
Uh, the Bengals and the Jets. I, I, don't, I don't know what in the world's going to happen here. You know, this this Joe Burrow led Cincinnati Bengals club that ain't got no O line. You know, there's there's no O line for the Bengals, and maybe the Jets can actually get to him. I mean, it's looking that bad for for old Burrow. Burrow might get an injury out here if this keeps up. So. You know, you wonder how in the world are the Jets going to keep that momentum up from last week, the final two minutes of that game against the Browns last week. How in the world is Joe Flacco going to follow it up? Is he going to follow it up by being elite again? I don't know. We'll find out. Boy, oh boy, this one right here is just weird. Like, this is a weird one. You got the Vegas Raiders and the Tennessee Titans both 0-2, both struggling. Somebody needs a win in this game. Somebody needs a win here. You got you got Derrick Henry on this Tennessee Titans offense, and it feels like he, I know he's got at least one touchdown because I had to relook at some highlights. But uh, he's been a non-factor these first two games. Like he's literally not been a factor. You have to have Ryan Tannehill do something. And for the Raiders, they just they just don't have a defense that can keep up. Like again, they got torched by Justin Herbert. They uh they let Kyler Murray, you know, do his thing, you know, dancing all over the field and making plays and getting the Cardinals back into it. So I wonder what's gonna give here. Cause I mean there's just two bad things. For these two teams, you know, the Raiders defense and the Titans offense, that just spells like a recipe of disaster. I don't know what in the world's going to happen in this game, man. You also got the Eagles and the Commanders now. Uh man, Jalen Hurts and company, they're looking more legit each and every day, you know. And I think, you know, this game against the Commanders may show something real interesting. May show something real interesting. We know Washington can play. Um... Yeah, they get pretty much got blown out by the Lions last week, but they came back and they fought hard last week. You know, it made it a respectable game. It, it still was pretty much over, but they made it respectable. The Eagles, they look, they keep this momentum up. A lot of team, a lot of people have picked them to win the NFC East this year, and I mean, they just look legit. You know, on both sides of the football, I'm I'm definitely watching this game on Sunday. I'll tell you that much right now. This one's going to be good. This one's going to be a good one. And then you got in the late window on Sunday, you know, the Chargers, the Jags. Uh, I, I don't know what in the world kind of, you know, young quarterback show this is, but this is a good one. Or at least an interesting one. Because Trevor Lawrence played a clean game for the first time in Really, I think the first time of his in his career he's done that. That Lawrence has played a, a, a damn good game. Then you got Justin Herbert, who's got you know injured ribs, you know, quite tender, not cooked, but quite tender. Uh, and Herbert, you know, I mean, Mance was resilient. Yeah, he threw the pick six last week. I don't know if I mentioned that, you know, during the recap last week. But yeah, he threw the pick six last week, but that wasn't really his fault. Was you know, it, it was just it was just not a great window, and nobody decided to you know make the catch at the right time. So you know, like I don't know how this one's gonna go. I don't know. I don't really know how this is gonna go at this point. Like, uh, I have nothing else to say about this game. <laughs> Uh, the Rams and the Cardinals, both these teams are one and one. Kylo Murray, he's got the car. He's really the only guy in the Cardinals actually doing anything. Now I said something stupid last week where I said, "Oh yeah, well, you know, Kylo doesn't deserve all this money." And you know, the, I, I feel like that was a dumb statement by me. I mean, my goodness, man, this man is bailing out this Cardinals team by himself like this is really really disappointing something's got to somebody's got to step up for Cliff Kingsbury's Cardinals 
And, you know, Sean McVay and the Rams, they're looking to keep the momentum up. You know, yeah, they barely had to get out of out of L.A. with a win, you know, against the Falcons last week, thanks to Jalen Ramsey. But um, this, this is going to be intriguing to see, you know, what in the world kind of game are we going to get from Matthew Stafford? What kind of game are we going to get from the rest of the Cardinals because somebody's somebody's got to do something like it it feels like at times you know Matthew Stafford is kind of looking like his lion self you know and and the rest of the Cardinals just look like they're lost kids out there you also got the Seahawks and the Falcons which is I, I don't I don't think I don't think anybody cares about this one you know Falcons 0-2, Seahawks should be 0-2, but I mean, Geno Smith, you know, helped bail this team out, you know, in week one, and I don't know how in the world, I don't know how in the world the Seahawks can keep this up, I think the Falcons, you know, they're the Falcons, I mean, there's nothing really you can say much about them that really warrants any more discussion, like, it's, it's a game that's happening. Why is it at 425? I don't know. And then, you know, a big time game. The Packers and the Bucks. Tom Brady versus Aaron Rodgers once again. Oh boy, this is going to be one hell of a game. You know, the Bucks defense, the Packers offense, both firing on all cylinders. You know, yeah, I feel like the Packers kind of got caught in a, in a log jam week one. Yeah, I feel like the Buccaneers defense, you know, you know, they they did everything they could, you know, the first two weeks of the season. Even though the offense wasn't doing much. But I, I feel like this game is gonna be one hell of a game. It's gonna be the probably the one of the best games of the weekend, honestly. Like this one's this one's definitely gonna determine some things in the NFC. Gonna definitely determine some things down the road. Cause I think, you know, if the Buccaneers can win this game, I, I think they'll they're gonna win. They're probably gonna win the NFC South pretty easily. I think the, you know, the Buccaneers are gonna win the NFC South pretty easily. The Packers are a little bit more concerned about because you know, if they can win the NFC North, because you know, again, there's still some kinks and issues with this Packers team that needs to be addressed. You know, with the wide receiver core, you know, I think this wide receiver core, it, 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 they need to prove themselves. Plain and simple, you can't have Aaron Jones do everything. Everybody else needs to prove themselves. So, we'll see what happens. And then, you know, the Sunday night game is the Broncos and the 49ers? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um, well, it's Jimmy G's time now. No Trey Lance. He's done for the year. A lot of guys, you know, on offense. Elijah Mitchell's gone, too. I mean... This is Jimmy G's show once again. How's it going to hang up against Pat Sertain the second? How's it going to hang up, you know, against this Broncos team led by Russell Wilson? I don't know. We'll see how this one goes at mile high on Sunday night. Or rather, like early in the evening if you're on the West Coast, you know, because time is a flat circle. And then Monday nights, oh boy. Oh dear. Really the only guy really to talk about here is Micah Parsons and the Dallas Cowboys. I mean Micah Parsons might eat Daniel Jones alive. You know, this is this I don't think I've seen a start like this for a defensive player in quite some time, you know. You know, we've seen our Aaron Donalds, you know, or TJ Watts or JJ Watts, you know, or Vaughn Millers, I mean but Micah Parsons has been playing on a different level, and that's not just bias pot talking here because of a Cowboys fan. That that's clearly me saying that this man has been playing lights out the entire season so far. And the Giants are two and zero. I don't know how they're two and zero, but they're two and zero, and they're looking to become three and zero. In bet life, like you wonder, you wonder. You really, really do got to commend the Giants for being 2-0. I don't think anybody expected it. But can they keep this up? We'll find out on Monday night. We'll find out at MetLife, man. 
And if it's an ABC gay too, oh boy, you already know. You already know how I'm feeling about this one. So that bookends the weekend, my Dallas Cowboys. And, you know, we're about 30 to 45 minutes away from kickoff of the Steelers and the Browns. I don't know if I'll watch, again, I don't know if I'll watch this game tonight. But I do know one thing is that the NFL this week is going to be as crazy as ever as it always is because it's the NFL. Any given Sunday, every every game matters. We're on the road to game 272, and we're going to be three weeks done by the time I come back to you on Monday. So I'll see you then, and until then, y'all take care, and whoever that 186 sub is, hello, welcome to the channel. Make sure you get your friends to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell. And you'll see all these videos coming right down the pipe. I'll see you on Monday.